Ma'am, shall we? Kavit. Ma'am, shall we start the session, ma'am? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, sir, shall we start the session, sir? Okay, we can start. Ma'am, shall we start the session, ma'am? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir shall we start the session, sir? A very good afternoon to one and all. It is a warm welcome everyone for this wonderful webinar on research on 4G and 5G in MIMO system. Organized by Department of EECE and uh, Research Committee of RSO Engineering College. Once again, I welcome you all. May I request Mrs. G. Kavita Man, head of the Department of uh, Electronics and Communication Engineering to propose a welcome address. Please, ma'am. Kavita, ma'am. Hello. So no one is there, sir. Please, ma'am. Please, ma'am. Please. Oh, please. Okay. okay, fine, sir. Fine. Thank you. May I request our principal, Dr. T. Balamurgan, sir, of Arsu Engineering College, to 
deliver a presidential address please sir a yeah, very good evening to you all i am dr t balamurugan principal of rs engineering college kumbhakonam our college was started in the year 2001 with three undergraduate programs from the inception we have committed ourselves to provide the quality education as a result of that today we are offering eight undergraduate programs and four pg programs in order to recognize our quality service the national assessment and accreditation council gave accreditation to our college most of the eligible branches are accredited by national board of accreditation the university grants commission recognized our college under 2f and 12b categories today i am very happy to hear that the research committee of rsa engineering college and the department of electronics and communication engineering are jointly organizing a webinar on research on 4g and 5g technologies in mimo system on behalf of the management and myself i wholeheartedly welcome the resource person of today's webinar dr d kumuda assistant professor department of electronics and communication engineering kingston engineering college bellu once again i welcome our resource person thank you sir i also welcome the participants from various regions and the research committee members of rsa engineering college and the head and the faculty members of ec department of rsa engineering college once again i wholeheartedly welcome all for this webinar normally the objective of organizing such type of webinar is to give exposure to the latest technologies because we used to say india is a developing country so developing means there is a change takes place every day so being a faculty member it is our sole responsibility to produce the industry ready engineers in order to produce the industry ready engineers we should be updated with the latest technologies then only we can produce the industry ready engineers so in order to update ourselves such type of programs will be highly useful so with this i once again welcome all you and i request the participants to effectively utilize this opportunity by having a very good interaction with our resource person so at the end of this program i hope all you are having some idea about with the latest technologies under this 4g and 5g used in mimo system so with this i congratulate for the success of this webinar thank you thank you sir thank you thank you, thank you sir may I request mrs p sivagama sundari ma'am to give a brief intro about today's resource person please ma'am Uh, very good uh, good afternoon to everyone i am sivagam sundari it's my uh, great privilege to introduce our chief guest um, dr kumuda ma'am kumuda ma'am working as a assistant professor in uh, kingston engineering college vellur from uh, 2014 to till and she has a um, experience as lecturer in skp engineering college and panimalar engineering college Uh, she, always she was a uh, top and in academic performance uh, she got her uh, diploma in 2002 with a uh, first class with honors and b uh, in 2000 she had completed her b uh, 2000 in 2005 at uh, tyagaraja engineering college madurai and uh, she completed her me in 2013 at anna under anna university in ganpati dulsi jain engineering college and she had completed her phd in 2019 at a vellur institute of technology uh, she has attended many uh, conferences workshops uh, workshops speeches fpps uh, some of the samples or uh, uh, some uh, there are some list of uh, programs these are uh, just a samples of her uh, uh, work 
she attended online quizzes uh, on research metrics in scientific publication with a score of 93 organized by mlr and uh, she has participated in webinar on introduction to blockchain technology organized by our uh, college and she had participated in many fdps uh, such as communication skill integrated with modern teaching methods and a program uh, linear integrated circuits and applications are some of the samples and uh, she published uh, 11 papers in various conferences and uh, 13 papers in various journals and uh, she is a uh, reviewer for seven journals such as uh, journal of ambient intelligence and humanoid humanized to computing it is an annex of one journal in anna university and european journal of remote sensing computational intelligence transactions on emerging telecommunication technologies computer networks elsevier journal concurrency and computation practice and experiences international journal of internet technology and secure transactions and the mom uh, did her research work in the title of uh, reduction of peak to average power ratio using block coding schemes in mimo ofdm system and she has filed uh, a filed a patent with the application number 2019140414493 and it is published in the date of 25 10 2019 the title is noise filtering system for digital signal transmission so uh, uh, always uh, once again i am telling you always is top at in academic and uh, uh, research performance so like uh, in this uh, seminar also she is going to give us a lot of information so i request all the participants to get uh, benefit from her talk thank you thank you ananda oh may i request dr d kumuda ma'am to take over the session please ma'am yeah good afternoon to ananda present here uh, this is kumuda from kingston engineering college today i am going to uh, give you a research on for uh, for the four generations and fusion technologies in mimo ofdm system actually generation uh, into from uh, 2014 to 16 and uh, fifth generation uh, currently i was doing uh, fifth generation research in fifth technology generation technologies in mimo ofdm system fourth generation is nothing but it is a lte system and fifth generation is the, the we are having more technologies in fifth generation so, uh, including internet of things uh, uh, cloud computing mobile computing and uh, massive mimo and many things we are having but uh, in this case 5g technologies mainly i'm going to see a multi, mimo mimo system mimo is nothing but it's a multiple input multiple output so the outlines we are i'm going to see so outline this is the outline first i'm going to discuss about long term evolution so long term evolution is nothing but it's a fourth generations and there are two technologies in this one is the ofdm orthogonal frequency division multiplexing and multiple input multiple output and then after that i'm going to see a for comparison and param comparison of fourth generation of fifth generation parametrics parameters measures and metrics Uh, then in this generations uh, uh, we are having lot of technologies but mainly i'm going to discuss about uh, massive mimo and their uh, designs uh, how we are going to design for the uh, fixed frequency in massive mimo and also mm uh, millimeter mimo uh, and their uh, results how the results we are going to get in software we are going to get and then conclusion so now uh, a yeah, long term evolution it's a fourth generation and uh, fifth generation i'm going to see a massive mimo with a millimeter wave applications next so now i'm going to give a uh, introductions of long term evolutions long term evolution is the first standard for smooth and efficient transition 
and it's it's advanced leading edge technologies and also it increases the capacity and speed of wireless data networks and it it leads to wireless broadband or mobile network coming technologies uh, this lte is a fourth generation fourth uh, fourth, uh, fourth generation wireless communication standard developed by the third generation partnership project uh, and these are the generations so we are having many data rates uh, which are communicated to everywhere in the different uh, generations from 2 2g to uh, 5g so the data rates we are using for the two second generation is 14.4 kilobit per second and for 2.5 giga uh, g we are going to use 384 kilobits per second in uh, third generations we are going to use 14.4 megabit per second and then in the lte system fourth generations we are going to say, use a data rates for the many applications from the using a mimo and oabn systems from 10 megabit per seconds to 1 gigabit per seconds in fifth generations we are going to say 10 uh, gigabit per seconds next the future benefits what is there are benefits lot of benefits of lt system in fourth generation uh, first one improving spectral efficiency higher performance and capacity and lower cost improved quality of services higher network throughput and it increased data transfer speed the features the features of the lt system is a low data transfer latency improved support for mobility increased spectrum flexibility uh, supporting fast moving mobiles end to end quality of services so in this case the long term evolution so the new technologies introduced in fourth generation in 2009 is orthogonal frequency division multiplexing this is one of the scheme and it's it's always called as a high data rate uh, parallel transmission and multiple input output is nothing but the antenna system so uh, first uh, in the orthogonal frequency division so we can call this as a multi carrier modulation technique and also it is a combination of modulation and multiplexing techniques it uh, the main uh, drawbacks in this is high peak to average power ratio but it maintains orthogonality and it it will uh, achieve a reliable high data transmissions because we need to transmit high data why we are go using that uh, oafd means it it will it is used to, to transmit high data uh, uh, bit rate uh, through the mimo of them system and through the channels and it is able ability to overcome multipath frequency fading so this is the block diagram of communication system of mimo optm uh, as as we know already the block um, um, the basic diagram of communication system in that uh, just to how the mimo and the oabn system is inbuilt in and what are the issues we are getting Excuse me, yes ma'am please maximize the screen ma'am Yes, thank you ma'am thank you so uh, this is the basic structure of uh, the communication system so how what are the issues we are getting in that uh, when we are uh, when we are uh, uh, embedded in the um, um, fourth generation so in this case the uh, first uh, how uh, what are the issues we are getting in the uplink and downlink so uplink we are going to use in uh, uh, in uh, transmitter side and uh, downlink we are going to use in the receiver side so first uh, how uh, the data input can be applied the data input we can take a 4 bit or 2 bits or 8 bits like that we are going to use in the serial way and the data input can be transmitted to the coding part so in that coding it will encode encode the data input uh, input by using some of the encoding technique and then to avoid some of the errors and it will be given to a bit interleaver so why we are using this bit interleaver means uh, each and every uh, every bit we have to give some of the gap because sometime it will uh, take one as zero or zero as one for that we need to use uh, some of bit interleaver between each and every data to transmit then after that we have to use a quadrature amplitude modulation so quadrature ampli amplitude modulations we can apply 16 qam or 64 qam Uh, quam uh, which is to modulate the uh, input data for, uh, given in the uh, de- encoder and the bit interleaver after that uh, the serial to first uh, the data will be given as a one by one so this serial to in parallel converter is converted into Uh, converted and uh, it will apply to your ifft why we are using ifft it is inverse fast fourier tra- uh, transform which is used to, to convert the frequency domain to the time domain uh, domain time domain and then uh, we have to have some of the cyclic prefix the, what is a cyclic prefix is it is uh, uh, it is a time god, god time uh, we have to use that god time to avoid the intercarrier interference and in inter, 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 intercarrier interference and intersymbol interference so first in the uplink we have 
have to add the intercarrier uh, uh, cyclic prefix. After that, in the downlink, we have to remove that. Again, we have to convert that uh, <coughs> data into parallel to serial converter. Here, we are going to calculate a, uh, calculate a peak to average power ratio. This is a major drawback, uh, drawbacks in the uplink. So we can reduce that by using some of the technique like uh, uh, SLM, SFBC, like HTBC, like that. Uh, this will, when the PAPR is high at the time, you will get a instability of the systems and will get a more uh, bitter rate. So, uh, following that, we, it will be converted DAC. Uh, we will use a DAC a digital turnover converter. Through that, we are going to transmit to the uh, channel. Uh, so, through before the channel, we are going to use a uplink that is MIMO antenna. We are going to uh, transmit a MIMO antenna. We are going to use and the downlink, we are going to use a uh, uh, downlink uh, uh, receiver uh, MIMO antenna systems and the receiver side we are go everything will be reverse so again it will convert A to D converter and parallel to serial and here the, in the transmitter side we use the cyclic prefix but here we are going to remove the cyclic prefix then that will after removing the cyclic uh, remove uh, cyclic prefix we have to transmit with the FFT so in the, the downlink FFT is used to again convert uh, from uh, time domain to frequency domain then it will be transmitted to the equalizer the uh, the purpose of channel equalizer, which is used to reduce the noise, uh, noise uh, from the actual uh, noise to the desired noise. Uh, in this case, we have used one of the technique channel estimation. Why we are using this channel estimation to means uh, to avoid the bitter rate. Uh, when uh, through the channel, uh, the and the antenna systems uh, definitely we will get some of the bitter rate. Every time we use to reduce the bitter rate and also we have to increase the signal to noise ratio. So hence to avoid the bitter rate, uh, we have to use some of the channel estimations like OMP, SOMP, app that is him but fast uh, space amp uh, uh, matching pursuit everything we are going to add and remove the bitter rate so then again it will be go, go to the parallel to serial converter the quam demodulator de interleaver decoding and finally are going to give you a original data data so uh, i told you that is uh, there is a drawback in the uplink uh, is a peak to average power ratio so this ratio it is a ratio between between peak instantaneous power and average power, and the signal of is defined in the equation number one. So, what are the difficulties? What are the challenges occur in the PAPR? Is is where the complexity increased? Reduce efficiency of the RF amplic power amplifier, reduces spectral and energy efficiency, performance degradations, and limits the capacity of the channel. So, when the capacity limits the capacity of a channel, means in that situations we can use a MIMO antenna. So in this, then in the downlink, the issues, the main issue is the bitter rate. So the bitter rate is cal calculated based on the difference between the demodulated data and original baseband. And the bitter rate is, uh, is the ratio of uh, number of errors and to the total number of bits sent. So this is the antenna systems. This is the basic antenna systems. We are having four antenna systems. First one, if you see, first one, it's a MIMO. That is a multiple input, multiple output. Uh, means that we are having more than one antenna of, uh, from the transmitter side and the receiver side. So in second one is SIM or single input. Single input means we are going to give a single antenna. In the my, uh, multiple uh, output, we are going to give a multiple number of antennas. So in the third one, MISO, it's a multiple input, single input. So we are going to input uh, more than one antenna and single uh, uh, single antenna in the receiver side and single input single output we are going to use single in, in, in single input with the single output antenna systems so, so among these four uh, uh, four um, uh, antenna systems, uh, the MIMO optimus is very important because it's having more uh, uh, more advantages uh, because it will be uh, used uh, multiple antennas at the both transmitter and receiver in a wireless systems, also known as uh, uh, wireless systems, and it is able to provide high data rate communications with the bandwidth efficiency. Bandwidth should be efficient uh, to get a higher throughput and uh, improved quality of services and also its use of a low complexity schemes and uh, uh, we are having more, uh, we, we are more capability to reduce the operation power consumption. So, so uh, before in previous uh, previous uh, PPT, we have seen the basics of communication systems uh, where the problem is occurs in the uplink and downlink. Now in this uh, in this uh, slide, uh, we are going to see the how the MIMO system will be.
be there. So uh, how we are going to transmit, uh, how the OFDM modulations and demodulations occurs through the channels with the MIMO antenna. See, this in this case, first, yes, we see in information source, uh, we are going to transmit to the coding part. So after coding, encode the data, it has to convert to serial to parallel, and each and every time uh, it will be, each and every bit can be given to a modulation of OFDM modulations. That means each and every bit will be uh, communicate simultaneously. Already the OFDM, what is the OFDM? It is uh, to convert, uh, uh, it can be transmitted high data rate uh, with parallel subcarriers. Parallel subcarriers, so it will take more parallel uh, subcarriers with the serial to parallel converter and it will be transferred to the OFDM model. So then uh, here uh, they have given the number of uh, MIMO antenna, that is one, two, eight. Empty they have given. It's a transmitter antenna. We are going to use MIMO or transmitter antenna. Uh, how many antenna we can use? Uh, two we can use and four we can use in the fourth generations. But in the fifth generation, we can we can use more than that. So here we are going to transmit uh, the data, the transmitted MIMO through the channel. And after the OFD demodulate receiver, the uh, receiver the receiver through the receiver MIMO antenna in the downlink. Then after that, it will decode and it will be given as the original data, uh, data. Sir. This is a base diagram. And also, in this case, we can see a, a, a antenna that is a block coding scheme. Why we are going this means so in the MIMO DMs, we are having number of antennas which can be transmit the multiple stream of data bits. So for that, we are having uh, encoding uh, a block coding scheme. So this encode as a block coding scheme as a, uh, a space uh, time block coding, ST, which is called as STBC, and uh, space frequency block codings. So in this case, uh, space time block coding means so what is that means the data stream can be separated by space 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 can be given a space between each antenna so from each antenna we have to separate it by space when you are coming for the time between the subcarriers so it and separated by time between subcarriers so why this stbc is used to improve the reliability of data transfer in the received data and it is used to reduce the computational complexity to get a high high bitter the less bitter rate with the low PAPR. So this is the basic structure of MIMO OFDM system in the fourth generation, that is LT system. See so how we can calculate uh, how the fourth generation of LT systems will work. In this case, what are the uh, I mean equations and the PAPR can be calculated? How will the results will be executed? See this in this case, first data stream I have given here. That is data stream. Stream uh, we are having more number of data. That is two 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 bit dates input bit bit uh, rate we, bit uh, we can give and four or three four or six eight we can give so then that will be given to a mimo uh, space time coding see space time coding is a, this is a encoding encoding but we are going to implement with the mimo ofdm so that means we are using a mimo uh, space time coding that can be given as given to parallel we have to convert a serial to parallel then it will be given to a OFDM modulation so OFDM modulation so, so we can see x1 x2 to xn minus we can use a number of bit uh, bit with the number of subcarriers so again uh, in this case uh, then it will the OFDM, after doing a modulation OFDM modulations we are going to transmit uh, through the channel through the channel, the channel will be before the antenna by MIMO antenna, and after uh, receive uh, a channel, we are going to use a receiver antenna. Then uh, it will be passed to the uh, OFDM demodulations, so, OFDM demodulation, and it will be uh, finally it will transfer the MIMO uh, space time decoding. So in the uh, initially we are going to use a time coding uh, encoding we used, and in the receiver side we are going to use a MIMO space time decoding, and the data can be uh, finally we are going to uh, get a original data that means data acceptance without uh, error or without a uh, more high uh, bitter rate so in this uh, we are going to use a channel estimation see why we are using channel estimations if we are getting a more uh, uh, bitter rate means we have to reduce the bitter rates by using some of the channel estimation it will estimate the uh, channels so how much the data will be uh, that is the error bitter rate will be occur and what is the ratio of signal to noise ratio that will be analyzed by the channel estimation so uh, already i told you that is a space time block coding i told in this case space frequency block coding so sfbc uh, there is a sf and here a frequency so we can uh, say that um, which transmit the stream of data bits through the antenna systems and it will be uh, defined uh, see here 
in this uh, diagram there is a two cross two sfbc antenna system we are going to use so it will take x0 x1 as first time bit stream to transmit and x3 x4 xn it will take as uh, how many data sequence we are having so how it will be uh, take uh, taken means it will be separated by space between each antenna so each antenna it will like uh, separated by space uh, space and uh, when you are coming to the some sub carrier time uh, separate by frequency between sub carriers so phase between antenna uh, Uh, each antenna and space separated by frequency between sub carriers so, so we can call that a sfbc antenna systems so that's why the two, two if you are taking a two input two transmitted input means at that time it will encode with the two variables uh, which is given as equation 2 and 3 is x1 x2 then the modulated input signal is encoded through sfbc so sfbc it's a block coding schemes and it will be used for the mimo mimo systems uh, through the ofdm modulation so at the time we are getting it taken as this uh, equation number 4 Uh, so i told you after the modulation we have to modulation it will be passed to ifft waveform ifft waveform it's a inverse pass fourier transform it convert the data in the frequency domain to time domain and uh, the the equations can be taken in the time domain uh, domain in the fifth fifth equation so this is for four four cross four if it is a sfbc the same way we can take for the stbc also so we can take a x0 x1 x2 x3 as a input uh, input data streams with the four sub carrier types of carrier 1 2 3 4 so in this case uh, separated by uh, time, there is a space uh, between each antenna and uh, separated by uh, frequency sfbc no so it will be separated by frequency between uh, sub carrier so uh, now this is the equations so after the encoding is done uh, the time divisions of uh, uh, time, time, uh, time divisions in the time domain samples of wfm signal to be given as s of n the equation 6 and uh, the pfr can be calculated so uh, the overall uh, mimo wfm signal uh, the sfbc is given in the equation number 7 so in this case uh, we are going to simulate the results by using the matlab uh, which varies with the uh, ccdf and the pfr so pfr Uh, how much PAPR we are we are going to get, and CCF is is, is nothing but it's used to calculate the probability of PAPR, which exceeding a predefined threshold value. CCDF cumulative distribution function. So then uh, finally, after when the after getting receiving the data signal, original data signal, at the time the total received signal can be given as given as equation one i y equal to h x n. So it's uh, already h is the impulse response and x is the input and uh, n is the additive white gaussians so the for the simulated parameters we can use this or the parameters main thing in mimo i have used a number of transmitter four and number of receiver is two and the pfp reduction technique is sfbc and we can use sf for example i have given here we can use stbc also and we can combine the some of the technique as sfbc and pts and slm we can use any technique and the sub carriers we i have used 64 128 and the number of data bits only 1002 1 1 Zero one zero zero one, so we can take a two two bits. That is x one x two, and the quam we can use for the sixteen quam. See, this is the results. See, uh, for this uh, for S A S Y case, I have taken and uh, S A M O and uh, MIMO we have taken. Uh, in this case, in which case we are getting uh, less bit rate and high S N R in the sense. Uh, for S A S A S O configurations, we have taken number of transmitter as one and the uh, receiver is one. Uh, so the bit rate is uh, is ten power minus five point eight. So in the same way, M I S O there is a multiple input and single output. Uh, uh, we are getting a number of transmitter is uh, four. Uh, 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 the transmitter antenna is four and the receiver antenna is one and the bit rates we are taken as ten power minus six. So in the MIMO case, we are going to take uh, uh, there is a number of transmitter is four and the receiver is two. Uh, we uh, and the bit rate is very less uh, when, when compared to the SA is four and MA is four. So the bit rate is taken as ten power minus seven. So this everything is. By using a, a MIMO system uh, with the OFDM system in the LT system for the which is this uh, all the things will be used for the uh, mobile communications of the fourth generations. So in this uh, features of uh, MIMO. So MIMO is uh, mainly we can say it's a multiple antenna technologies to improve the system cap capacity. Uh, improves the system capacity is very important. Capacity of the MIMO is is used to increase the capacity of the signal. There is signal to noise ratio through the channel. So 
that is the very important thing in the fourth generation and it enhances the link reliability it reduces the interference and maintains better bitter rate and it exploits multipath propagations by monitoring the capacity of radio link what are the advantages means it will uh, tra transmit a higher data rate and uh, by redu reducing the bitter rate with a lower accessibility and uh, the high quality of services and it has a high diversity gain and high multiplexing gain so now we are going to the comparison of fourth g and fifth g uh, already I, uh, we have discussed about fourth generation so it is started in 2009 and the bandwidth is uh, 10 100 uh, 100 megahertz and the technologies we are using for this fourth generation is lte mimo by max Max and the switching type. What the we are having many type of switching circuit switching uh, many type of uh, switching we are having. So in this case uh, for the fourth generation we are using a packet switching and access type uh, type we are having a TDMA, FDMA and CDMA and also BDMA. So in this the fourth generations we are using four division multiple access to access to many number of users uh, simultaneously simultaneously with the fixed frequency and the bandwidth. And what the advancement in this uh, fourth generation is high mobility handoff high speed. Speed. The application is wearable device, mobile TV, uh, mobile TV, high speed applications. So when we are coming to the 5G, fifth generation, uh, it is developed in 2018, but the bandwidth uh, we, are, we are having 30 to 300 gigahertz. So the technology, because we are there are many technologies for improving uh, medical imaging, robots, uh, and uh, remote control of vehicles, and for the industry, manufacturing industry, we are having many technologies. But in this in this session, I we are going to discuss about the MIMO. So we are using the technologies Massey MIMO and EMF waves. So switching type is we using uh, package switching, OFDM and BDMA. BDMA is nothing but uh, a beam division multiple access. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's coming in the beam forming. Uh, advancement is high speed, low, low latency and the reliability, uh, reliability and availability. And this is the applications. So mainly we are using the healthcare for the medical monitoring for the elderly people and robots, video streamings and vehicles. Uh, it is a smart uh, transportation, uh, transportation, uh, 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 transport systems, and for the manufacturing industry, I think we are going to use. And uh, this one is. Uh, and this is a comparison parameter measures of 5G technology and 4G technology. So 4G technologies and uh, for, e, for, e, for each and every applications, applications that is uh, recent applications in uh, uh, now, uh, recent applications be for the mobile or internet of things or many machine learnings and the cloud company, whatever. We have to see the parameters measures in the metrics. Uh, by having the, those metrics and uh, uh, measures only, we have to implement the uh, implement and we have to measure the for, for the 5g applications so now uh, next one this slide is saying about the 5g technologies so 5g technology is a kind of network uh, which is used to design uh, design and connect virtually everyone and everything together including machines objects and devices so 5g uses the frequency bands initially see we can use uh, two types of uh, frequencies in five fifth generations but in the fourth generation we can use uh, up to one gigabit second uh, bit per uh, second but in this uh, 5g we are having initially for below six gigahertz and above six gigahertz below six x six gigahertz we can use a massive mimo for uh, many uh, uh, many uh, cases of uh, uh, technologies and in some case sometimes we can use 3.3 to 3.8 gigabits so if, if it is above 6 gigahertz uh, uh, including uh, the 26 to 100 gigahertz band for referred to as a millimeter mimo see i told you uh, massive see some in some applications we will use the massive mimo alone some applications we have to design the mimo antenna for the millimeter wave so, so in this case uh, we are going to use uh, 26 to if it is uh, including above uh, 6 gigahertz with the 26 to 100 gigahertz band, uh, we can call that as a millimeter wave, which is to increase the capacity of the wave technologies. Um, see, this is a uh, what are the technologies we are having in my 5G? There is a massive MIMO millimeter wave and uh, terahertz band, wireless uh, software, there's networking, Internet of Things. So, so in the inter Internet of Things, we can see many things in this artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, and neural networks. Everything is comes under the Internet of Things and green communications, device to device communications, the network function virtualization, and big data mobile cloud computing. So, in this case, uh, this uh, it's, it's like a 
5G means we are having more uh, uh, applications and many, many technologies. Uh, so, but in this case, I have taken a massive MIMO and a millimeter wave. Uh, in the, when you are using um, this uh, 5G technologies, uh, what are the uh, advantages? It, it is minimize the error and increase the efficiency of the network uh, from device to device communications and also to multiply the capacity of the antenna links and it can suffer too. I have taken a massive MIMO and MM wave MIMO. So in fifth generation, so it delivers a characteristic. The main character is very important in the 5G generation. It's a high, higher multi-GBS data speeds, ultra low latency, uh, more reliability, massive network capacity, increased availability, higher performance and improved efficiency. So now we are going to see about the massive MIMO. So what is massive? Massive is nothing but it's not a physical size of the antenna or substrate. It, is a, it is refers to a number of antennas, how many number of antennas, mainly we can use in the massive MIMO at least 16 antennas. In, in, in the fourth generation, we can use a two, two cross two, four or a four cross two, two or four cross four uh, MIMO we can use. In the massive MIMO, at least 16 antennas on both sides of the transmitter and receiver end with the sub six gigahertz wireless, tech, wireless access technologies. So it can provide uh, good services to wireless terminals with a high mobility. So mobility means it will be used for many uh, applications of mobile communications and also it used, used to serve many terminals simultaneously in the same time frequency resources. So the, the, this massive MIMO antenna is very attractive when compared to the fourth generation MIMO antenna. Why? Because it has a two, initially two gigahertz band and they, they can design for a half wavelength spaced rectangular array. And uh, also we can use a 200 dual polarized. There are many uh, polarized elements out there uh, with, with, with the size of uh, 1.5 into uh, 0 .0, 0 0.75 meters larger. Uh, so this mass, massive MIMO is having, we can use more hundreds of base station antennas with the ten or tens of users. That means we have uh, each base station consists of a large antenna array and it is served uh, simultaneously with the excess of base station and uh, massive MIMO. Uh, so what are the benefits of massive? By using this MIMO systems, so it's uh, uh, inexpensive, low power components, reduced latency, and uh, uh, medium access control. It's a very simplification of a MAC layer, very important on the data link layer. And uh, it is used to reduce uh, interference and uh, any jamming of, uh, there is a uh, presence during the communication. And it increases the data rate and increasing base link signal to noise ratio and channel ordering. So this is a communication link. Uh, so already in the, we have seen the systems in the uh, fourth generation, but uh, in the generally I have given the transmitter part, uh, uplink MIMO antenna through the channel. We have uh, through the channel, we are going to use the antenna and uh, in the receiver side, downlink MIMO antenna. The downlink MIMO antenna is the receiver side and we are going to get a uh, uh, data, original data in the receiver and massive MIMO antenna we can use and also millimeter wave technology we can use. And what are the advantage, what are the benefits and we are getting in this massive and the MMM MIMO antenna is it's a large antenna gain, more capacity, shorter wavelength, smaller antenna size. So what is the difference between uh, uh, micro, uh, Microwave and the MM wave in MIMO antenna is uh, the parameters. Uh, see, if I, uh, we have to design uh, if, uh, for a fixed frequency, first we have to keep here uh, some of the frequency. With the frequency only, we are going to calculate all the parameters of the 5G MIMO systems. So, so in this case, uh, uh, this uh, microwave we used for fourth generation and fifth generation, but in the millimeter wave only the new, this is a new technology in 2018, and with the only we can use a 5G not for the 4G, the specifications and the parameters only for the generations. See, first in the, for example, I have taken this for the fixed frequency 2.0. It's a fixed, we are going to design for the 2.6. When we design for the 2.6, the wavelength we are going to get in this range and the frequency range will be given 2.5 2.69 and the bandwidth will be 2.5. When you are going for the 5G technologies, uh, we have a fixed frequency 5.6 and the wavelength is in this uh, 0.0536 and frequency range between the 5.5 to 5.7 and uh, bandwidth is 2.5. The same way millimeter wave means we have 93, uh, uh, so we can use um, fixed frequencies more than uh, 900, that is uh, uh, 6 gigahertz. So in this case, we have taken 93. 
93 and, uh, and the wavelength is 0.0032 and the fixed frequency is uh, the frequency range from 92 to 95 and the bandwidth is obtained is 23. So now we are going to see the design of the uh, MIMO massive antenna. What are the how uh, uh, how the uh, design of the antenna will be given for the 5, 5G applications? So in 5G applications, uh, we have length of the patch, uh, length of the patch, width of the patch, and we have to calculate the efficiency, and uh, we have to see the uh, coefficients, the reflection coefficients, and the return loss. So this is the uh, formulas uh, to apply for uh, the design of the antenna. First, I uh, have designed, we have seen the design of antipodal fiber LED antenna, AVA design for fifth application, 5G applications, uh, how, how, much and, uh, how much frequency we are going to use for the uh, networks. So first, the, this operation frequency of 5G networks comes of two sets. One is FR1 and FR2. So that is frequency range, we can say. If FR1 means we are going to use uh, uh, four 50 megahertz to 6 gigahertz. When you are using a for FR2, uh, the range is uh, from 24 to 25 gigahertz to 52.6 gigahertz. So uh, this, uh, when it's coming for the FR2, if you are taking a frequency range of substrate uh, between uh, 24 to 25 gigahertz and uh, 52.6 gigahertz, we are going to get a mm wave spectrum. Uh, we can call that as the mm wave spectrum. And here they decide for a uh, uh, band of frequencies from 26.5 gigahertz to 40 gigahertz. So um, yeah, the, in the design, uh, how, how by fixing uh, 26.5 gigahertz to 40 gigahertz into the 5, 5G applications, uh, how much the dimensions we are going to use? 32 mm into 35 mm into 1.6 mm, which is designed using a for frequency range 4 uh, subject with 4.3 and loss tangent as 0 0.02. So the gain is 8.78 dBi and the bandwidth is greater than 20 gigahertz and the efficiency is achieved with 96 6.83 percentage. So in this uh, proposed, they have used to embedded with uh, with the HSRR and without without HSRR. So this is the shape. This is the elements of uh, anti uh, portal AVA antenna, and uh, the A is a unit cell, and this is loaded with the HSR. So HSR is nothing but hexagonal shaped split ring resonator. Uh, and then uh, the results. So we can uh, use a simulator. Result. We can get a simulator results by using HF faces or uh, uh, in many softwares we are having. Uh, so in the, the, we have to calculate the first return loss. So return loss when you are taking, it's uh, RL equal to 10 log 10 uh, PI divided by PR. PI is nothing but say incident power and it's a reflected power. And when the frequency ranges from 25 to 40, uh, we can calculate the return return loss uh, in this uh, with uh, HSR or, or and without HSR. So this one is a reflection co coefficient. So we can uh, calculate the reflection co co coefficients with the VSWR. So VSWR is nothing but voltage standing uh, uh, wave ratio, um, wave ratio, uh, the same frequency. Also, we already we fixed you now 20, 26 gigahertz to 40 gigahertz. And we can get the simulator results like this. And for the gain also, we are getting uh, two ways. Uh, to 28.023, we are getting uh, gain 5.2606 uh, to 7.007 dBA. And for uh, uh, 39.07 gigahertz, we are getting 6.3 to 7. Uh, 7, 7. In the same way, we are going to calculate uh, uh, efficiency. Efficiency means uh, uh, the efficiency can be calculated with gain and directivity uh, uh, gain. It's a ratio of gain and directivity with the percentage uh, from the range of uh, 26 to 40 uh, per, per gigahertz, and we can calculate. And so, it's, uh, for uh, the, for the design of 26 point gigahertz to 40 gigahertz, we are getting we are obtaining 90.8 percent uh, of efficiency by using the AVA without HSR and uh, with HSR, and it is uh, reduced uh, 15 dBm without affecting radiation characteristics of the antenna. So this is the second uh, design. Is a, a second design of multi baronic edge coupled microstrip antenna for 5G applications. So in this 5G application, since we are using a massive MIMO, uh, because the frequency will be fixed uh, above the 6 gigahertz for the, the 
generation. And uh, so hence, uh, we're going to use micro strip lines or utilize to encourage a chip coupling slot on the grounded metal plane. So we, first, uh, initially, we are going to take a micro, micro st uh, strip lines and edge coupled. Then after that, multi uh, uh, proposed edge coupled micro strip antenna. And in this case, it can be achieved. Uh, we, have, we have designed for uh, three applications. One is for Wi-Fi, one is another for WiMAX and 5G applications. So we fixed 2.5 gigahertz for Wi-Fi. We can uh, 2.5 means it is less uh, less, and we can say it is a fourth generation for the fourth generation. Uh, and uh, for generations, it's uh, nearly up to 1 gig gigabit seconds uh, and 8.2 gigahertz for WiMAX and 34 gigahertz for 5G, 5G applications. Hence, uh, what are the advantages uh, uh, in the, by using this, uh, uh, fixing this uh, frequency means we are getting high, higher gain, directivity, smaller value of voltage standing wave ratio. See, um, uh, what, what are the novelty? First, uh, the novelty of this work is uh, by using a multibronic edge shaped microstrip uh, microstrip uh, antenna it improves the shape of the slot it increases the bandwidth decreases the reflection loss it improves the coupling proficiency of the radio antenna and methodology what are the methods we are going to use uh, uh, for getting achieving that uh, results uh, first one microstrip antenna and then H shaped micro strip antenna. And after that, we are going to use a multi bronic H shaped micro, uh, micro shaped antenna. Uh, the formulas uh, to design the length and the width of the antenna by equation L, uh, L W, and L, uh, which is length of the patch, width of the patch. And um, we can use for, uh, we can uh, take a frequency, a resonant frequency, or is a frequency, resonant frequency. L, L is the actual length and uh, epsilon R is the dielectric, dielectric constant and uh, del L is the radiation gap. By having this, uh, having these equations, we can find the length of the substrate patch and width of the patch to design the proposed antennas of the uh, multi-bronic H-shaped micro-shaped antenna. So here, this is the shape of the, uh, there is a multibronic S-shaped microstrip antenna uh, with the upper dielectric substrate and lower dielectric uh, substrate uh, for the parasitic patch. And the shape of the uh, antenna is H, H, K, H. So we can propose that as a multibronic uh, with the 5G applications. So next in this antenna, uh, the both the lower and upper uh, substrate is constructed with copper. And its uh, permitted size is 5.4, and with this 1.2 mm, and the compl uh, complete extent of the antenna system uh, is 62 into 52 into 1 mm uh, cube, and it has a band uh, for filtering for tuning the size of the feeder, and uh, we can use a um, bilateral power divider, which is to achieve a filtering. So this is a simulation result. In the simulation results, uh, we can find a reflection coefficient uh, by using the voltage standing wave ratio. And uh, in this case, we, we are going to vary the frequency from three to six. I have taken example for uh, three to uh, six gigahertz, of the, the variation of magnitude. And uh, the data transfer capacity is 25 or 21 percentage uh, with 15 dB at recurrence of 3.052, uh, 3.77 gigahertz. And, uh, the B, B figure is the diverse value of W equal to 3.4 to 3.6 gigahertz at 11 dBi. So this is the radiation patterns of the multibronic multi H-shaped coupled microstrip antenna. Uh, so the first one, uh, first one is uh, uh, we have a directivity uh, at 70 megahertz and uh, 1.8 megahertz, 70 megahertz for the um, for the fourth uh, sorry fourth generation MIMO and 1.8 gigahertz for uh, uh, gigahertz and the directivity is at 1.10 gigahertz and the next one is 70 uh, megabit uh, megahertz and 1.8 gigahertz. So uh, this is a simulated result, uh, which we designed for by using a, uh, by using a multibronic uh, H-shaped uh, uh, shape coupled micro strip antenna. Uh, first, uh, they are find uh, the first table is for uh, operating frequency and applica applications taken as fifth generation WiMAX Wi-Fi and operating frequency we have uh, is uh, given as 34 and WiMAX Wi-Fi is given as 8.2 uh, 1.2.5. And in the bandwidth, we we have in this range for 5G applications and WiMAX and Wi-Fi and return losses. So it will be in the negative and 30.55 is for the fifth generation. Uh, 
And same way, the table uh, antenna efficiency is uh, calculated for uh, fifth generation WiMAX Wi-Fi uh, with the radiated uh, efficiency, total efficiency, and an uh, uh, antenna efficiency with the power with the uh, with the uh, 98, uh, 99.6, 99.2, and 98.5 for the uh, for the uh, applications of uh, 5G WiMAX Wi-Fi. So this is the simulated results uh, for. Uh, uh, effectiveness of um, uh, we, we, first one is VSWR at 2.81 dB and uh, antenna frequency to 98.99. So the frequency range they have taken from 1.7 to 2.2 gigahertz. And then the, the next one is a radiation efficiency, and the fourth one is a return loss, uh, return loss uh, in case. So hence, uh, by using this novelty of multibronic, uh, uh, we achieve uh, 34 gigahertz for uh, 5G and 8.2 gigahertz for WiMAX and 2.5 gigahertz for Wi-Fi. So, and also it's having a um, advantage is uh, uh, low, less cost data transfer capacity, and it's having lightweight, simple assembling and little size. Uh, and, um, it is size. And the next one, third one, uh, we have uh, we have taken a designed uh, design for the dual polarized microstrip antenna for, for 5G applications. So in the dual polarized my, uh, micro microstrip antenna, we can use most many thing in the fourth generation also in the fifth generation also. And the, but uh, in the 2009 it will be very very familiar uh, to for many applications uh, applications uh, in the uh, in the healthcare monitoring and also for uh, uh, for the uh, transportation uh, smart transportation systems and uh, the antenna is achieved with higher frequency between uh, 3.3 gigahertz to 3.6 gigahertz so see the frequency range is decreased before i uh, find for uh, 26 to 40 gigahertz now it will be designed for the 3.0 gigahertz 3.3 gigahertz to 3.6 gigahertz so it determines wide band, high gain, low cross polarizations, and also with the high isolations, 25 dB between the feed network. So uh, this is a calculation. So already this uh, formula, as I have given, explained in the previous uh, slides also. Uh, first, in this case, uh, we are using a feed. The feed is uh, two feeds are connected together uh, for uh, uh, for uh, the design of dual polarized. So hence, we have to use the formula feed length LF. Uh, uh, to calculate the, uh, reflect, uh, the efficiency, efficient, effective efficiency of the uh, dielectric constant. So uh, the, they, we can use the formula, efficiency formula, and see this is the shape of the dual polarized antenna. This has, actually it is taken as an existing system. Uh, existing systems, in this case, two feeds are, feeds are connected in the uh, substrate, and uh, the feeds are electromagnetic coupled feed and aperture feed. The two are connected in vertical and horizontal. So hence, uh, by using this, we have to calculate the frequency, frequency parameter, the frequency and return loss uh, with the formula. Um, in this case, see the, the results are given uh, for using the dual polarized antenna system is return loss for dual polarized um, uh, for uh, both the feed and uh, feed one and two uh, for the dual polarized antenna. Uh, first one, uh, in this case, uh, radiation pattern for feed one is a second uh, graph and third graph is the for radiation pattern for feed two. So hence, uh, this uh, this diagram, this simulated results for the dual polarized antenna uh, with uh, with the uh, with the frequency range uh, uh, of uh, three point uh, uh, 3.32, uh, 3.6 gigahertz. So when you are coming for the polarized dual polarized microstrip antenna, so microstrip antenna, we are going to uh, propose uh, the propose uh, uh, the dual polarized uh, microstrip antenna for same 3.3 to 3.6 gigahertz. So in this case also the shape of the substrate will be uh, uh, different uh, when compared to the dual polarized antenna alone. Uh, so in this case, we have three layers, ground plane, radiating patch, substrate, and uh, it will be, uh, it will be uh, fetched with the substrate that are interfaced to feed line between the upper and lower substrate to radiate the signal in the antenna. So by having this, uh, uh, we, are, we are going to find uh, the uh, frequency and the return loss uh, on the radiation patterns of the dual polarized microstrip antenna. So when you are coming for this simulated results of dual polarized microstrip antenna uh, in this case the return loss the return loss can be given uh, taken uh, uh, taken from the frequency of uh, 
uh, 3.32, 3.6, and the radiation pattern is given for feed one and feed feed two. Uh, these are the simulated results, uh, which can be used by use uh, by uh, HFSS. HF is HS, uh, HFSS is the high frequency simulator, um, frequency structure simulator. By using that uh, simulation, we are going to get this uh, results. So hence, uh, for this third design, uh, we have taken um, uh, antenna uh, antenna uh, with the uh, with the frequency of 3.3 gigahertz to 3.6 gigahertz to achieve high isolations. Low coupling, uh, uh, coupling. Uh, hence, uh, the um, isolations. Uh, the main advantage uh, is more than 40 dB, and the bandwidth of 21.9 percentage and 24.23 percentage, and the reflection coefficient is less than uh, 20 dB. Um, with uh, with the, by using this uh, HFS software. Hence, uh, uh, these are the designs of uh, 5G uh, 5G applications with the uh, MIMO antenna systems. So we have analyzed three things. Three things. So mainly, these uh, uh, three uh, three designs are uh, are used for the 5G applications. The 5G applications we can uh, mainly use for the. Um, this uh, massive uh, massive MIMO antenna with a large antenna gain, more capacity, and MM wave uh, uh, with a shorter wavelength, a smaller antenna size. Antenna size. So there is a difference between when when we are seeing the simulation of the uh, fifth generation and the fourth generation. Uh, the fourth generation uh, we won't uh, design for any antennas uh, with uh, according to the 5G applications. But in 4G uh, we have we have only the two technologies. We can use for the Wi-Fi and WiMAX also. But the, the mobile communications uh, we, we more, mostly we are going to inbuilt with the IEEE standards 5. Point, uh, uh, 8.02.11 a and b and we can use for that uh, so in but in the fifth generation the fifth generation so it is uh, more uh, technologies we can uh, we are having more technologies uh, so in this case uh, uh, we can design for the different uh, frequency ranges. See, uh, first we have to design uh, frequency with the length and the width. After that, we are going to simulate for results uh, for the how much length of the substrate and uh, width of the substrate uh, with the um, uh, frequency frequency range, whether it is a mm wave spectrums or uh, uh, microwave uh, spectrums uh, we are using. And if, if we, if we, it is less than uh, uh, four uh, the megahertz to six gigahertz or whether it is a frequency range one or frequency range two according to that we have to design so all the uh, antennas of for, for, for 5g applications so mainly 5g applications uh, it will be used for many uh, recent current applications so after that uh, we have to simulate with the different uh, uh, codings so hence uh, hence these are the these are the um, technologies, uh, research on uh, fourth generation and fourth generation technologies of the results uh, can be given. Thank you. Sir? Participants, if any queries, Please raise your hands. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, nice presentation, ma'am. Yes, good evening, uh, ma'am. Uh, actually, how I'm many antennas are uh, uh, how many antennas are required for four G and five uh, G MIMO systems, ma'am? Is there any limit That's or? No, it is there actually for the four transmitter two cross two or four to four or more than one antenna. There is a, a four cross two antenna we can use or two cross four antennas we can use. There is a two transmitter or a four uh, uh, transmit receiver side. But um, uh, but in that fifth generation we have uh, more than six gigahertz. So we can divide that in a four. I told you that is a frequency range one and two. The frequency range one means we can use below six gigahertz. That means uh, a ten megabit. Uh, 
bit per seconds to uh, six gigahertz uh, gigahertz we can use. So according to according to that, uh, we can use the antenna at least sixteen antenna, sixteen antennas for the transmitter side and the sixteen antenna in the receiver side. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the same way, we can use at least means we can use more. In the figure also, I told uh, for uh, multiple hundreds of uh, base stations, we can use number of users with many multiple number of antennas. So for the fourth generation, we can use uh, antenna as a four cross two or two cross four or four cross four. But in the fifth generation, we can use 16, at least 16 antennas. That means we can use more than 16 antennas at the transmit side and the receiver side. Mm, okay, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, you said that uh, HFSS software, you uh, tried on HFSS software now. Is there any other uh, software available? Yeah, we are having a CST, a CST microwave studio software and also ADS, ADS also we are having. Uh, we have uh, many, many, uh, many software. So in this, uh, in this, uh, we can, I can decide in uh, a CST. In the second design, I have designed for uh, CST and the HFSS we have seen and the area also we can see the softwares. Three softwares I know and that I have worked also. Okay, thank you. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. For 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 ORDM, we are using for sorry for four G. We are using the one multi carrier modulation technique ORDM. Ma'am, pardon. And for five G, we. Ma'am, pardon, please. Yes, uh, for 4G, we are using OFDM. Yes, OFDM and MIMO, and, so we can use. Yeah. And for 5G, there are various multi-carrier modulation techniques like FBMC, GFDM, and UFMC. Which okay. one is the best among the three Technologies. that can be used for 5G? You are saying about technology. Yeah, multi carrier modulation. Yes, ma'am. Ma multi carrier modulation, uh, ma'am, uh, multi carrier mod modulation will be done in fourth generation and fifth generation also. In fifth generation also, we can use a OFDM. Why? Because the OFDM is more uh, attractive to transmitting uh, high bit data rates uh, parallel because it will actually transmit uh, parallelly uh, simultaneously to all the technologies. The OFDM uh, can be used for both the 4G and 5G also. Is we can say that is a multi-carrier modulation. So, so for that one, we are using all, for the, all the things. Yes, ma'am. We... There are various other multi-carrier modulation techniques for 5G, like FBMC, GFDM, and UFMC. Like OFDM, it has high PAPR, but FBMC is having less PAPR as compared to OFDM. Yes, so, we are having. See, we are having um, uh, in OFDM. We are getting high uh, frequency. There is a high uh, peak to average ratio. But we can reduce by using some of the techniques. So we are having many techniques now. They have built out SFBC, STBC, and PTS, SLM, and uh, there are many techniques. So we can use uh, by using that techniques. Uh, we can uh, go for the uh, OFDM. OFDM because in that uh, 2000 uh, that is uh, when they developed that uh, uh, 5G, 5G they have given uh, the technology what are the technologies using for the packet switching uh, uh, two access type they have given one is OFDM and another thing is a beam uh, BDM BDMA it is a beam division multiple access so uh, we, we I cannot say that uh, only OFDM is having less P, uh, I mean uh, less PAPR or we can analyze in three things we can use use the things uh, for the five of generation. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Participants. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now I request Mr. T. Divahar, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, to propose a word of thanks. Please, sir. Sir, I am audible, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Before word of thanks, I would I request participants to share their oral feedback regarding this webinar. Please, participants. One or two participants, please. Oral feedback. 
hello sir good afternoon to all this is uma mahesh from university college of engineering panruti uh, am i audible sir audible ma'am audible ma'am uh, yes, sir, she's she's she has a sound knowledge on the uh, topic and she has uh, she has done her work excellently and she's proved her uh, excellence and uh, we could see it evidently even she she has uh, answered uh, appropriately uh, we are impressed with her work sir we thank the organizers and the arasu college of engineering for the work done sir thank you thank you ma'am thank you ma'am so one more participants please Right. so thank you so big thank you to our resource person of this day dr d kumuta ma'am so assistant professor department of ec kingston engineering college velur for her effort towards the research on 4g and 5g technology in mimo system so thank you ma'am for this making this webinar more interesting and meaningful and also i request uh, i would uh, like to express my sincere thanks to our respected principal and beloved hod department of ec and coordinator for this webinar so mr gb sadish kumar sir and mrs p sivam sundari ma'am for their moral support and guidance and also i thank mr karthik ayan and mr joseph arokyam sir for their technical support last but not least the wonderful participant from various institution so thank you so much for your cooperation right so feedback link will be sent through your registered mail or through our whatsapp group so thank you so thank you one and all thanks sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you sir thank you sir thank you ma'am